am not encouraging or advising anyone to modify their firearms. This is not a tutorial. This is for entertainment purposes only. If you've been following my channel recently, you know that my latest gun project hyperfixation is porting my pistols. I have access to a mill and I enjoy doing the design and machining work. I've ported three pistols prior to this one and performance wise, they all benefited from porting. I'll link to those videos in the description if you're interested. I wanted to get some porting design and machining under my belt before I ported my most expensive and nicest pistol, this Shadow 2. This is a range toy for me. I don't compete, so I'm not worried about adhering to any competitive class regulations. I will go into a little detail about the port design and machining challenges, quantify the performance before and after, the porting with a muzzle flip angle comparison, show some general shooting footage, and discuss how it feels to shoot. If you want more information on the modifications I've made to this pistol to convert it to single action or make it parrot colored, I will link to that video as well. I started with a more detailed model of the Shadow 2 slide, barrel, and barrel bushing than I normally would so I could play with different designs and see which I liked best. I ended up going with a single slot in the top rib of the slide like I did on my P01. I think that this slot complements the design of the slide nicely and it's very simple to machine. I always have to keep in mind my machining skills and the capabilities of my manual machine when designing these ports. A recent experience with a chunk port on my Springfield Hellcat has led me to prioritize smaller port size. Spalling or pieces of the bullet and the bullet jacket were uh, coming through this port. My thinking is that if a piece of the bullet jacket gets shaved off, that might affect how the bullet flies through the air after it leaves the barrel. It could be destabilized and my groups could open up. I think smaller ports should help maintain accuracy due to less disruption of the bullet as it passes the ports. They should also reduce the spalling that comes out of the ports, which can tear up the barrel and slide finish and deposit material in the barrel lockup area, like you see here, which could affect accuracy and function if the buildup gets excessive, especially on a gun like this with a very tight tolerance barrel bushing. Since this is a special gun to me, I wanted this porting job to be a bit unique in some way. So I wanted to go with more smaller ports instead of three or four larger ports like I did on my two previous CZ porting jobs. Now, to fit eight smaller ports within this single quarter inch slot in the slide, I laid out the ports in a VR configuration. If you're familiar with VR layout motors, they are a narrow V with staggered cylinders and both banks usually share the same cylinder head. By staggering the ports and putting each bank of ports at a 15 degree angle off the vertical, I was able to fit them in the slot while leaving enough material between the ports to not weaken the barrel. This layout is also shorter in overall length than uh, four larger inline ports. This barrel was a little bit more time consuming to set up prior to machining. Since the vise was tilted to stagger my ports, I couldn't zero my y-axis off the vise jaws easily like I normally would. My dad had the idea to machine a tight tolerance rod that would be a snug fit in the bore, so we got to work on the lathe. After the barrel was clamped in the vise and my angle set, I zeroed my y-axis off the end of this rod with it hanging out of the barrel. It worked great, and that will be what I use to zero my y-axis on all my 9mm V-port configurations moving forward. I was able to zero my x-axis off the muzzle like normal. I made a drawing of this design and dimensioned it so once I had my angle set and the axis zeroed, machining these eight 332nd inch diameter holes was easy. Of course, machining the slot in the slide was simple as well. The barrel and slide are both carbon steel on this, so I was just able to refinish them uh, with cold blue, and now they're soaking in some oil. This is before porting. Keep in mind with my muzzle flip comparison, I take measurements from one single shot, but I try to make sure that shot is representative of the group of shots that I filmed. Due to variation between the shots and how I take my measurements, I wouldn't feel comfortable reporting any more accuracy than about plus or minus half a degree. I measured 12.3 degrees of muzzle flip before porting. Now after the porting job, same 115 grain Winchester 9mm ammo.
I measured about 8.3 degrees of muzzle flip. If we take into account that plus or minus half a degree measurement accuracy I mentioned, we get somewhere between 25 to 31 percent reduction in muzzle flip. I haven't shown this in a video yet, but the first thing I do after a porting job is check my zero. I zero all my pistol dots at 15 yards. Here's a group I shot from bag support, and the orange one inch diameter pasty was my point of aim, so I would say there was no impact shift. This gun was already flat shooting and had low recoil. Now it's even better. Uh, the difference in recoil feel was less drastic after the ports than some of the other pistols I've ported, and I think that's just because it shot so good beforehand, although I am impressed with the muzzle flip reduction I measured. I slightly reduced overall uh, port area compared to my P10F, which has a similar barrel length, as I just don't think this gun needed as much port, and I think that was the right decision. I am pleased with the ejection pattern and distance, so no recoil spring changes are needed. Oh my god, I got a 10 split in there. I wanted to pause here and say that this is the fastest I've ever shot a pistol on a shot timer, or probably ever. Most of the hits were C and D zone, don't get me wrong, but god damn it was fast. The trigger on this gun is bonkers. This gun was already a monster. The grip and ergonomics fit my hands perfectly. It's got this uh, insane two and a quarter pound single action only trigger. It already had low recoil and muzzle flip due to weighing almost three pounds and the lightweight slide riding inside the frame rails. And now it's got ports and less recoil and muzzle flip. No, I haven't shot a $7,000 2011 from Atlas or something like that, but this is the best performing gun I own and have personally shot. I'm very pleased with how these ports look and perform. Of course, they uh, smoked my front fiber optic sight, but I don't care because I run this dot, which is sick for 300 bucks, by the way. Bit of spalling, looks a little roasted around the ports, but no biggie, shit will buff out, right? Let me know what you think of the CZ Shadow 2 and this porting job. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching.